Hey everybody, Crafty Media is finally back. And today I'm going to be reviewing the most hyped and highly rated MCU movie of all time, Black Panther. I'm going to be exploring the differences between the movie and the comics, the real world inspirations for Wakanda and all the different characters from African culture and history. This video contains plenty of spoilers, so you have been warned. Black Panther is probably the most hyped and highly rated Marvel movie since The Avengers. So going into the movie, my expectations were off the charts. Kevin Feige even went as far to say it's the best movie Marvel Studios has ever made. The movie finished, and I looked over at Ryan and I said, that's the best movie we've ever made. At the box office, it's achieved the third highest four-day opening in movie history ever. So does the movie live up to the hype? Or perhaps the question should be, could it ever live up to the hype? Let's look at some of the performances. In my opinion, Michael B. Jordan delivered a terrifying performance as Eric Killmonger Stevens. It's the first time Jordan has played a villain, and he's starring in his third Ryan Coogler movie, which also happens to be all of Ryan Coogler's movies. So the director, Ryan Coogler, was in fact born in one of the film's key locations, that being Oakland, California. And he's only 31 years old, but has been a filmmaker for 10 years. Ryan is a former athlete and college football star. After graduating with a degree in finance, he enrolled in film school and made a series of award-winning short films. He then caught the attention of Forrest Whitaker's production company, Significant Productions, who in fact financed his first feature film-length movie, being Fruitvale Station. That movie had a budget of $900,000. And of course, it was Forrest Whitaker who also played Wakandan war dog turned Wakandan shaman, Zuri, in Black Panther, sacrificing his life in an attempt to save T'Challa's. Let's roll back to Michael B. Jordan's Kill manga. As a villain, he was definitely one of the best things about the movie, if not the best. He posed a real threat to the protagonist T'Challa and in my opinion is the second best Marvel villain behind Loki. And there's an argument to be made that he's the best because of Loki's portrayal in the movies since the Avengers. I have been falling for 30 minutes! In the comics, Eric Killmonger's father wasn't the brother of T'Chaka, but his father did work with Claw and he did live in the United States, but in Harlem, New York, not Oakland, California. As mentioned, it was the film's director Ryan Coogler who was in real life born in Oakland, and this change in location is perhaps a nod to his upbringing and childhood. I think changing Killmonger, whose Wakanda name is Indajaka, to be T'Challa's cousin, adds a little bit more drama and stakes to the movie. This change also makes Killmonger of royal blood, which is why he was able to challenge T'Challa in ritual combat for the throne. In the comics in 1972, we are first introduced to Killmonger, but instead of seeking ritual combat for the throne, Killmonger seeks to overthrow the Wakandan government. Interestingly, in the comics, he does throw T'Challa down a waterfall. In the end, T'Challa kills Killmonger, who is later awesomely resurrected by the Mandarin, by the power of his rings. In fact, Killmonger has been killed and resurrected many times in the comics, not only by the Mandarin, but also by Wakandan magic and the Altar of Resurrection. Something, of course, that would be an incredible storyline for Black Panther 2. Another standout performance was that of newly proclaimed smartest person in the Marvel Universe, T'Challa's sister, Shuri. Now, Shuri is played by 24-year-old actress Letitia Wright, who's from a small country called Guyana, which is situated in the Caribbean islands. In the comics, she is heir to the throne of Wakanda and wanted to become the first female Black Panther. And in the comics, she has also been enhanced by the heart-shaped herb and has been taught to fight by T'Challa and and the Dora Milaje. The Dora Milaje and of course their leader Okoye were incredible in the movie. In the Avengers Infinity War trailer it shows that Black Widow is in Wakanda and he is hoping that the Russo brothers have somehow written in a fight between Natasha and Okoye. Wouldn't that be incredibly awesome? I thought one of the best action scenes in the movie was when Okoye was taking out several of Claw's henchmen. In fact apart from the CGI rhinos which was ridiculous, I thought the overall action in the movie was some of the best justified and exciting action ever in any comic book movie. Talking of Ulysses Claw, I thought that Andy Zirkus really upped the ante in his portrayal from Civil War. It was almost like he was some kind of weird hip-hop loving South African Joker type character and I was so disappointed when they killed the character. Now I understand how it served the story but he is definitely another character that has to be placed on Killmonger's Altar of Resurrection. Talking of South Africa, in the comics T'Challa's mother Ramonda, who was played by Angela Bassett in the movie, was originally from South Africa 
and was T'Chaka's second wife. In fact, much of the movie was inspired by South Africa. For example, T'Chaka, played by John Carney, is South African. The Wakandan language in the movie is actually the real-life language of Xhosa, the home language of Nelson Mandela and the current president of South Africa, Cyril Ramaphosa. There are in fact 11 official languages in South Africa, and much of the tribal conflict in the movie is inspired from the conflict between South African tribes. T'Chaka's name is inspired from Shaka Zulu. It was Shaka who in the late 1700s introduced the short stabbing spear used by Killmonger. Remember when he broke the long throwing spear in his ritual combat with T'Challa? Now the shortened spear is known as an assegai and it gave the Zulu warriors a terrifying advantage over their enemies in hand to hand combat. Shaka was ultimately assassinated by his own half brothers. Even the blanket shields worn by Wakabi and his border security tribe are inspired by the Basutu tribe blankets which originate from the mountains of Lesotho. Now Lesotho is a small country that is completely surrounded by the country of South Africa. Wakabi also put in a good acting performance and I enjoyed how he submitted to his wife Okoye in the end. Some more inspiration from the comics was Killmonger's skin. He had marks on his skin for each kill. Now this was actually inspired by one of his allies from the comics in 1972's Jungle Action number 15. It was one of his henchmen called Kraul. Lepito Nyong'o played the character of Nakia extremely well. Now in the movie Nakia is portrayed as a war dog spy and also the love interest of T'Challa. In the comics she was accepted into the order of the Dora Milaje and she was from a very early age obsessed with T'Challa and openly wanted to marry him. She did anything to get his attention even throwing herself from a high window into a shallow pool where T'Challa was hanging out with his real love interest Monica and T'Challa was forced to resuscitate her to her delight. She also tried to fake Monica's death and was expelled from the Dora Milaje by T'Challa. After being forced to leave the palace, she was captured and tortured to near death, but was found and restored to health by Killmonger and his Altar of Resurrection. So Nakia is actually a villain in the comics, and this could be a great storyline for the Black Panther sequel. Chadwick Boseman's performance as T'Challa was very good, but I felt it was somewhat overshadowed by Michael B. Jordan, Andy Serkis, and Letitia Wright's performances. But this served the story well, and it reminded me in some ways of how Christian Bale's performance was overshadowed by Heath Ledger in The Dark Knight. It's not always a bad thing. In fact, I think putting a lot of emphasis on the villain was a move in the right direction from Marvel. The movie is extremely well edited and paced. I thought the direction of Ryan Coogler was excellent, and I can't imagine anyone else directing Black Panther 2. And with the movie set to make over a billion dollars, I'm sure he will be back. The movie felt like a standalone movie and it didn't include too many references to the larger Marvel Cinematic Universe and this was refreshing as it allowed me to be fully taken up with the world of Wakanda. But it did set up some interesting elements for Avengers Infinity War. In the first post credit scene, T'Challa opens up his technology to the world and Wakandan technology is going to be extremely important as the Avengers and the world battle Thanos. Especially as from the Infinity War trailer, it seems Wakanda will be the scene of a massive battle with Thanos' forces who are probably coming for an infinity stone or possibly for Wakanda's vibranium. And there is a theory out there that vibranium may somehow be linked to the soul stone which is the only infinity stone we don't definitively know the location of. And the soul stone may be the ultimate source of vibranium's incredible properties. Although there is no evidence of this link in the comics. The second post credit scene of course shows a healed Bucky who is referred to as the White Wolf by some children. Now, the White Wolf first appeared in 1999 in Black Panther issue 4. He was not Bucky but he was rather Hunter who crash landed in Wakanda and his parents died and he was adopted by Teichu. He essentially led the Wakandan secret police and he is an ally to the Black Panther. Could we see Bucky take up this mantle of White Wolf and get his own Shuri designed vibranium suit but at very least we can guess that his new bionic arm will be made of vibranium in Infinity War. Something else I want to touch on is that I think Marvel Studios should be applauded for the predominantly black cast which by the way makes complete sense since this is a Black Panther movie. So a predominantly black cast is consistent with the source material. And even more so than the cast, Marvel should be applauded 
for the predominantly black production crew, including the director and co-writer Ryan Coogler, co-writer Robert Joe Cole, production designer Hannah Bleacher, costume designer Ruthie Carter, executive producer Nate Moore, and designers Dorian Fletcher and Camille Friend. I'm personally glad they resisted trying to shoehorn in some of the more popular characters like Iron Man or Cap or Bucky, just for marketing reasons. This decision to trust the source material has also been vindicated by the box office numbers. Overall, the movie was superbly directed, had an engaging story, thrilling action with a fully realized and terrifying villain. Now when I rate movies, I normally do it on overall quality and rewatchability, but mostly I rate a movie based on how the movie made me feel. And for that reason, I'm giving Black Panther 8.5 out of 10. In my opinion, it's probably in the top 5 MCU movies behind Avengers, Captain America Winter Soldier, Guardians of the Galaxy and Captain America Civil War. So there you have it! Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like and then share it. I post lots of videos every week on comic book movies and TV, including Marvel, DC, Star Wars and other blockbusters. So why not subscribe? Thanks again. Cheers for now.